Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video in my mega product design course for beginners. If you haven't checked out that course, make sure to check it out. In this video, we're gonna dive deep into component properties, variants, base components, and so much more. And I'm gonna show you how to become a really pro designer in Figma. Now make sure to check out all the chapters in the video to see what I'm gonna be covering. And I recommend you check out the entire video because I'm gonna be covering from the most basic concept to the most complicated thing that you can do with component properties and base components. So the most important thing is that while you're watching this video, I would recommend you to sort of open Figma and recreate things along with me so that you have an idea because this is really hard to understand just by watching. You have to watch and then implement it side by side to understand what's happening. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, starting off, we have this simple button component that's over here. And I'm going to explain what a variant is and what are components and properties. Now, if you already know about this, you can skip to the future parts of the video. But if you really want to make sure that you don't miss out on anything, you can continue watching. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I'm going to go ahead and click on this button that says create component. And then we can go ahead and call this a button. Now, this is what we call as a master component. So when you see these uh, four um, four diamonds or you can see that in the layers panel, um, it show it tells you that it's a master component, which means any changes you make have to be made over here and not anywhere else. Now, the moment you duplicate this, we see that we don't get this title and label anymore. And also the button, uh, the, the look of the icon changes, it's just a single, simple diamond over here. Now that is called as a component instance, right? It's called as an instance. Now, if I want to make any changes over here, I can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to call this CTA, whatever it is, and it works appropriately. That is very simple. This is a master component and this is an instance of the master component. Okay, now moving forward, let's talk about variants. Now there are many instances where we have this button, but it has multiple types and multiple states. Now let's say for example, you're designing a particular screen and you have this one small button, but you might also be in a situation where you would want the button to be edge to edge, right? So if you take a frame, let's say we take an iPhone 13 frame, for example, Okay, and we want to put this button over here. Now, ideally, we want a button that goes from the left edge of the screen to the right edge of the screen. Okay, and I can click on this button and make sure that the alignment is set to center. Okay, now the thing is, sometimes we want buttons to be short and sometimes we want buttons to be long, right? So in that case, we might have to create another variant of this primary component. So what that means is I'm going to go ahead and click on this button that says add a variant or you can right click and choose add variant. It must be in the option somewhere. I'm just going to click on this and that creates a variant. Now, uh, a couple of quick shortcuts that I follow and a couple of tips and tricks that I follow, I'll be mentioning those as well. The first thing I do is that I actually add a fill and then I press shift A on my keyboard and shift A, what it does, it, it creates an auto layout. So if I press shift A, you can see it creates an auto layout. And what happens basically is that I can just quickly go ahead and increase the spacing so that it's very easy, easy to organize stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and increase the width of this to be um, 375 minus 16 minus 16. I'm doing minus 16 because we want these gaps over here. Okay, so now and then I'm going to click on the parent component over here. And then in the properties, I'm just going to choose type. And then I'm going to select the first one. And I'm going to call this, um, I'm just going to call this regular. And the second one, I'm going to call that as full width. Okay, so now when I select this instance that we have over here, now you can see that we have a type, we have regular, and then we have a full width. Okay, so the reason it's not working is because I overread it. So what you ideally want to do is you want to make sure you say, uh, reset all changes so that you have the initial one, and then you can then choose full width, or then you can choose regular. Okay, now we might fall into another situation where we have different states. So for example, we have a button uh, with without any icon stuff, but then we might fall into another one where, for example, if I make a duplicate, we might need, let's say, a loader state. So I have this loader icon over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reduce the size of this to be 24. And then I'm going to throw that inside over here and uh, make sure that the values are the same. So this is around 43 pixels tall. Make sure that this is also 43. So I'm just going to go ahead and reduce the size of this. And uh, then I am going to go ahead and stretch this. So there we go. And then I'm going to take the same thing over here, copy that, paste it over here. Um, and then obviously reduce this as well. There we go. So now we have more. So we have regular, we have 
regular loader. Here we have full width and then here we have a full width loader. So when you come back over here, now we see that we have four options. But the problem here is that there are so many options and it can get really confusing. So one thing that you can do is you can come over here and you can add another property. Okay, so I'm going to say I'm going to add a variant. Okay, and we're going to just leave this property for now. Okay, so now we have two options. So the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the second one and set that to size. Okay, and the first one is going to be type. So this one is going to be type regular and I'm going to make the second one loader. And then also I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to set the size to regular. Okay. And the second one, I'm going to set the size to be full width. And this also size to be full width. Um, and then here, this is going to be a regular button. And then this one is going to be a loader. Okay. So make sure that you always select the parent element and then you see the values over here. So now what happens is that here, it's much easier to select Item. So I'm going to set this to be a loader or if I want it to be a full width, I can set that as well. Now, this looks fine, right? This is simple. Now, but the thing here is that each button is obviously going to have multiple states involved. Okay. And what does that mean? So to give you an example, I'm just going to go ahead and make four copies of this. So I'm just going to select all of this. I'm just going to press command D so that I go ahead and duplicate it. And I'm going to create a new property. Okay. And I'm going to call this state. Okay. Now for each of these four, I'm going to go ahead and change the color over here so that we can see, uh, or maybe I'm going to make it dark, darker to see that, you know, there's some sort of a hover effect going on. As you can see, the color is a little dark. And for these four, whoops, I'm just going to select these four. And here in the properties, the state is going to be default, uh, or I'm just going to call it active. And for these four, I'm going to call this hover. Okay, so now as you can see here, we have multiple things. We have type, width, and we also have state. Okay, so I can make this hover state. I can make this to regular. I can make this to, uh, you know, whatever loader and make this full width, whatever it is. I can do a lot of things with it. Now, the other thing here is that you can obviously go ahead and rearrange all these things. So if you want to change the order, so for example, over here, uh, the state is hover first and active second, which it ideally should not be the case. So what I can do is I can just click on the settings and then move things around here and there. I can also move these things here and there. So maybe the state I want to keep on top and then I want to keep uh, the type and then I want to keep the size, right? So that way you can just control the way information is presented over here on the instance. Now, here comes the tricky part. Now, what happens when you want to create multiple states? So right now we have just two states, but what if there's a pressed state? What if there is a focused state? What if there is a disabled state, right? We're going to end up making so many variants over here. And what if, you know, let's say there's a situation where I'm just, let's say I'm going to go ahead and just break this component. So I'm just going to right click and choose detach instance or option shift B uh, or option command B that is. Um, and what if there's an icon over here? So let me quickly go ahead and get some sort of an icon. So let me get a Chevron. Um, all right, so, and I'm gonna make this 16 and then I'm gonna make this white, right? Now, what if we have a button like this? All right, now for that, we need to create multiple, all the five different states. We need to create small width and full width. And then what if we have a different one, right? Let's say we have a button that says back. And then, you know, obviously this is going to be the other way around. So then for this again, we need five different states. We need two sizes. And that's just going to add so many, 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 many components, right? So in order to fix this problem, Figma came up with this concept called as component properties. Now, component properties does a phenomenal job to be very honest, but at the same time, it has a little bit of a drawback and I guess Figma is going to be working on that. And I'm going to explain what that is as well. So let's go ahead and for example, we take this button over here, okay? And there are basically three types of component properties that are involved, okay? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make this into a component. I'm going to call this button new, just for sake of simplicity. 
And there are three things. Now, the first thing, which I feel is probably the most useless thing, is a text property. So if I click on this, you can see that here, beside layer, we have this button, which is called a Boolean property. Then we have content, which is a text property. And there's another one called as instance, and I will show you that when I'm playing around with the icon. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this text property over here, and I'm just gonna call this button text, okay? And the value is basically the placeholder text, right? Basically what you see. And I'm gonna go ahead and create property. Now, what this does is when I come over here and make an instance of this, you can see that we have a few properties and there's a property that says button text, and then this is the value, and I can go call this, let's say, register. Okay, and that goes ahead and just changes this. Now, I feel this is probably very useless, and I can go ahead and change this directly over here to, let's say, um, make payment, for example, and that gets the job done, and that updates here as well. So I don't really see the need to have this text property, right? But anyway, Figma introduced it, and that is the first one. Now, the second one is called Boolean. So what that means is, for example, I'm gonna click on this icon, okay? And here in the layer, right? Make sure you come over here to the layer and then you click on this button, which says add Boolean property. And then what you can do is it gives you two values, which is true or false. So basically true is visible and false is invisible, okay? So I'm just gonna say Chevron, okay? And then click on enter to create a property. So now when I go ahead and create an instance of this, you can see that now this initial text property that we created was there, but we also have this additional chevron. And if I turn this off, you can see that this goes away. So how does this solve the problem? So if we come back here to what we saw originally, I don't have to go ahead and create multiple variations and versions of this. I just have to add all those properties that we made over here, over here, and then we will just have to create variants for the sizes and the states. So I'm saving a lot of time and removing a lot of unnecessary variants that we don't need because this button component itself is going to have all the properties that I mentioned over here, okay? Now, if you want, we can go ahead and make a duplicate of this. I'm gonna say Command D and then I'm going to rotate this to the side. And what we can do is do something different. So for example, over here, I can select this and here we have Chevron. So I'm just going to click on the main component and I'm gonna double click here and then we'll call this Chevron right, okay? And then we'll click on the left one. And then here I'm going to remove this and create a new one. And then we'll call this Chevron left, okay? So now I have two options. So I can either choose Chevron right or I can have both or I can have neither of them, right? So in that way, as you can see, I'm creating so many different versions of this main component. And the only thing I'll have to additionally create as variants are the various sizes and the various states, okay? Now, the last one is about instance swap. So let me give you an example. Now to create instance swap, you obviously need to make the element which is going to be swapped as a component as well. So what I'm trying to say is here we have the main component, but sometimes we want to swap this component to be a different icon itself, right? But as you can see, this is not really a component, it's just a regular group, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this and I'm just gonna make this 24, for example, and then I'm gonna make this a component and I'm gonna call this uh, Chevron right? I'm also going to go ahead and get another one. Let's just say um, we get, I don't know, um, just some random um, element. Let's get this briefcase, for example. And I'm going to obviously change the color of this to be white. And then I'm going to set this to be 24 as well. And then I'm going to make this a component. And then I'm going to call this bag. Okay. So now I'm going to take this chevron and I'm going to put that inside over here. Okay. And I'm going to delete this and I'm going to use this. As you can see, this is an instance of the main icon. And this is going to be um, uh, 24. Uh, sorry, this is going to be, well, this was 16. Yeah, I'm going to make this 16 as well. For sake of simplicity, I'm just going to re remove this. Just assume that we just have one icon. And over here, I'm going to go, and as you can see, it has a layer that is Chevron right, that is visible. So what that means is over here, I can just turn this on and off. 
that's working perfectly. Now the other thing here is the instance swap. So I can come over here and here, as you can see, if I click on this, I can select all the components that I have created in my library or the local components. Now what local component means is components that are made on this very particular specific file. But you might have other ones, which is a separate Figma file altogether where the components were created. And usually that is how the practice is. There is one file which is has only the components. And then obviously you make multiple files for different projects and different flows or whatever. But local means that the component was made in this specific file. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. And here again, there's this icon which says apply instance swap property. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say icon swap. You can call it whatever you want. And then as you can see, you can choose what the default value is going to be in this. In this case, we want it to be the Chevron and then we'll click on, click on create property. So now what happens is here that two things are being combined. One is when I turn on the Chevron, right? It automatically reveals the icon swap, which is so cool because obviously I don't want to swap the icon if the icon itself doesn't exist. So that is something that's really cool. So when I turn it on, it gives me this other property where I can then come and then pick another item. Let's say I click on the bag and then that replaces it to the bag. And if I don't want this, I can close it up and then it goes. So that is how you use instance swap. So these are the three types of component properties that Figma provides you with. One is the text. One is the uh, Boolean property of hiding or showing elements. And the last one is the instance swap. Now, the most important thing here to understand, I'm going to repeat this very carefully. If you want this behavior, right, this very smart behavior, you need to understand that the element that you see over here has both the instance swap property and the Boolean property. Now, why am I telling this? It, it might sound very obvious, but as we go further in the video, I'm going to give you a real example where it gets really confusing. So make sure that if you want that dynamic behavior, you need to have the Boolean property and the instance swap property applied to the same element that you see over here. Okay. Always keep this in mind. Okay. So now let's get into something a little bit more complicated. Okay. So now let's look at understanding how do we create a list item component? Because list items is pretty much my favorite item, my favorite component, I mean, because there are so many things you can do with it and constructing it is really tricky and really hard because if you master this, then you can pretty much create any other component in the world. Buttons are really easy. List items are not. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is when you're starting out creating component is try to bring out as many variations as you can. You don't have to bring out every single variation of a list item or basically whatever component that you're using. You just want to get an overall view of what and all is possible. So let me tell you what that means. So over here, we have something that's very simple. We have a title, we have a subtext, we have some icon here on the right, and then we have a CTA. Now there's another version where we have a tag. We have another version which has an overline on top and then some text on the right side. And then here we have an icon, which is different from the CTA and the tag. Then you have this two text levels. Uh, and then you have tag plus icon, and then you have the icon on the, on the, the CT on the right side, and then you have a tag and subtext together. Here you have two tags and a subtext, and then here you have a drop down for the title, and then here you have something totally different. So as you can see, if you were to go ahead and create components, there can be pretty much, you know, 10,000, you know, combinations of this put together. And you multiply that with the number of states you have, let's say you have three states, and let's say you have 10,000 components or variants of this, that's going to be 30,000 variants, which is ridiculous, right? So this is where component properties comes into picture. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to use component properties. And there are certain things that Figma does not allow us to do. And that's when we will introduce this concept of base components, right? So stick with me. So I'm going to take this first one over here and we're going to start creating this uh, one by one. And I'm going to show slowly break it down and make you understand how to construct it. Now, the most important thing is you need to be a master and a pro at auto layout. You need to know this inside out because the way you set up your components, your component properties, and the way you construct them using auto layout needs to go hand in hand. So I have a tutorial on that, which is going to make you a pro and a master at auto layout. So definitely, definitely check that out. Link will be in the description. So let's go ahead. Now, the first thing is I'm just going to remove the one on the right side. Okay. And we have basically this thing on the left and then we have some title and then we have some sort of a subtext. 
okay? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the subtext and uh, we have a situation over here where we can have only a title and not a subtext. So maybe I'm just going to go ahead and make that uh, duplicate so that we have a visual thing. So let's say that this is also a possibility where you just have the title and no subtext. Okay, so that is really simple. So I'm going to click on the subtext. Uh, first of all, you select the main thing and then you make that a component, obviously, and then I'm going to call this list item. Okay, and then you select the subtext and then you come down here to the layer section. In the layer, you can add the Boolean property. You click on that and then you can say subtext. Okay, and then you set the value to be true. If you want the default value to be uh, invisible, just set it to false. But in this case, we're gonna keep it true. I'm gonna say create property. So let's keep testing it as we go ahead and you know make this component. So I'm gonna make a duplicate of this, which end up becoming an instance as you see over here. And obviously we have this uh, item that says subtext and there you go, it perfectly works, okay? Now the other thing is to understand is that I have gone ahead and created this into an auto layout as you see over here. And if I select the main item, you can see that the alignment is uh, to the left middle. So if I had set this to top, um, and if I go ahead and remove the subtext, you can see that the title stays to the top, which is not right. So um, Basically, we need to set this to be middle and uh, that makes sure that this entire auto layout that we have is in the middle. Again, if you do not understand what I'm saying, you have to watch that auto layout video and learn auto layout very well in order to create these components. Okay, so this perfectly works, which is looking good. Now, the next thing is we let's handle this right side. Now, this right side element also can be visible or not. So let's say I go ahead and make another version of this of what is possible, let's say we remove this. Let's say this is also a version of the list item that we can have, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select this main one over here, as you can see this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this layer and I'm gonna say create property. And now there are multiple naming conventions that are there in the industry. Uh, some people call it left accessory and uh, other people like to call it a leading. Right, so leading is for first and then trailing is for the end, right? That's the opposite, leading and trailing, but you can pretty much call it anything you want. You can even call it start or you can even call it end. That's also another pattern that people follow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call this start uh, for case of, for sake of simplicity. I'm gonna say start and I'm just gonna press enter. Um, and now if I come over here, you can see that I can get rid of the subtext and then I can get rid of the starting item as well and then I can go ahead and bring back the starting item and then just have it so I can control it any way that I want. Now, another thing to note here is that since when I remove both of them, the height of this reduces to like 42, initially it was 64. So in order to maintain that, what we can do is I can just click on the main component and instead of hug, I can set to fixed height and I can set that to 64. So that way, no matter what I do, the height always stays 64 pixels. Okay, perfect. So now let's go back and turn on everything as original. Now the next thing here is that we have this different state. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna bring that over here. So sometimes that we can have this thing which has an icon and sometimes we can have this which has this sort of a progress bar, right? So we want to be able to swap between these. Now, as we saw previously, we're going to use instance swap property, but I'm gonna show you the problem with using instance swap in this case. And I'm gonna actually show you by doing it and then tell you why instance swap might not be the right choice over here. So obviously, to, to, if you want to make instant swap work, both the elements need to be components. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna call this progress bar. I'm just gonna call this progress circle. Okay, um, yeah, sorry. Progress circle. And I'm gonna pull out this one, okay? And this is going to be icon container, right? I'm just gonna call it something. Okay, so now we have these two elements and I'm gonna make a copy of this. So I'm gonna take one of this and I'm gonna put that inside. So that obviously, as you can see, this is an instance. Okay, now for this instance, we have the start property over here, which is basically the visibility. So just to make sure that we're on the right track, you can see that this is working perfectly. Um, and now for this, I'm gonna choose an instance swap property. Okay, so I'm gonna say start swap. Okay, and as you can see, you can see that what is the default, it is the uh, in uh, icon container. I'm gonna go ahead and click on create property. Okay, so now as you can see over here, when we turn off the start, the icon container on the left goes away. And uh, when we turn it back on, the icon container is visible again. Okay, now let's say we want to swap this to this progress circle. Now when I open this, 
The problem here is that we end up seeing all of these different options, right? Now I can choose the progress circle, right? But the problem is I can choose button new. I can choose this icon, the chevron right. I can choose this list item component. I can, I can choose bag. I can choose so many things. And that's not right because this component is allowed to have only these two options, right? You can't have the designer or the developer picking whatever component they want, right? So that means we need to limit it in such a way that when I select this item, I can choose only between the icon container or the progress circle, right? So if I go back over here and I set this back to, let's say the icon container, I need to be able to figure out a way where I can choose icon container or I can choose progress circle and I shouldn't be allowed to choose anything else. So that is why instance swap property will not work here. So now to fix this, there are two basic solutions and I'm going to show you the first solution. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go call this um, start and I'm going to call this start as well. Okay. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to go ahead and combine these. And when you, when two elements have the same name and both of them are master components, as you see over here, both of these are master components. I can combine them as variants. Okay. And I'm going to, let's go ahead and move all of this to the right side. And I'm going to press shift a so that I make it into an auto layout um, so that I can add stuff if I want, you know, as you can see, I can quickly add stuff. And also I'm going to add some color over here. So I'm going to set the fill to this. Okay. And here in the properties, we're going to choose type. Okay. So, or maybe we can just call this start type. And the first one, um, actually I'm going to make the instance swap, the icon container, the first one, it's going to call this icon container. And the second one is going to be progress circle. Okay. So now I'm going to delete this one that we have, and I'm going to make a copy of this and then bring that over here. So that now that, as you can see, we have an instance of start. Okay. Or maybe even I'm, I'm going to call the start element. Maybe that's better. Okay. So now when I click on this, you can see that we have subtext and then we have start. Okay. The thing is we can't change the icon container to the progress circle because we didn't add the instance swap property, right? The instance swap property did not work. So what do you have to do is I'm going to press enter on my keyboard. And when I press enter, I end up selecting the children elements and I'm going to click on the left one. And when I click on the left one, you can see that we have now this new dropdown called as icon container, and then I have progress circle. So what I'm doing here is I'm restricting what a designer can choose when they select a particular element. So I'm going to go ahead and select progress circle and that works. And that means that I can't choose anything else. Now this is what we call as base components, right? Now this is the main component and this is a base component because we are using two variants and putting that into a list item, which is the main component. So this becomes a base component and this is the master component. Now, if I just go ahead and select this individually, I can change this from progress to icon container or whatever that is. Okay. So I'm just basically using that. And what that means now, even though we are making it simple and easier by giving these toggles, we still have to go one level deeper to change the component. Now, the interesting thing here is that when a new designer joins the team, or let's say a developer is making these components, they need to understand what are all the possibilities that are available, right? Because when I click on this component, I get only two options, but actually, no, there is another option of me to change this, but I have to go one level down. So in order to communicate that in a very interesting and fun way, what you can do is when you have this start element, right? We have the start. What you can do is you can come over here and you can just quickly play around with the naming convention. Now I'm going to delete this instance property that we still have because we don't need it. And here I'm just going to say start and you can do multiple things. Either you can add like three dots to indicate that you can go one level down. Okay. Or you can, let's say, use uh, this sort of an arrow, which uh, says that, you know, you can go more down or you can just use the down arrow um, over here. And then, you know, that shows you that, you know, you can go down. So when I click on over here and I see this icon, I know that I can select more options. Okay. Now it's up to you what you want to do. Um, or you can even use, you know, like this icon over here. And when you see that, you can see that as an icon and that shows you that you're going down. I just personally like to use, um, this icon, which shows you that, you know, you can go one level down or 
you know, maybe we can even use this down arrow. Or actually, you know what, let's just go uh, with this one. Okay, so now when you click on this, you can see that you have this arrow, which means that you can still go one level down. So then what I'm going to do is going to press enter and I'm going to click on this start element over here. And then I can choose this progress circle. So that's the first solution. Now the second solution is going to be a little different. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select these two and we're just going to bring them out. Okay, we're going to bring them out and I'm just going to put them side by side. And what do you see over here? The naming convention says, start element progress circle, start element icon container. Now these two have their names. So now let's see what happens. Now if I come over here and select this, okay, or let me do this. What if I select this element, okay, um, and then to this, I add an instance swap property. So let's say I'm going to say start swap, okay, and we have the icon container, which is basically uh, this icon container, clear, create property. Now over here, what happens here is that now even though I can still select any item that I want, right, I can even choose this button, right, we can save a little bit of effort by having this folder, which is created called a start element, and then the user can pick only these two, right? So now the user knows that they can only choose between this folder, which says start element. And the reason that this name is coming over here is because we have this over here, start element slash progress circle, start element slash icon container, okay? So when I select this and I can turn this off, as you can see, okay? I get this progress circle and then I'm allowed to choose only between this. Now that does not mean the designer or anybody else cannot choose this. They still can. And this system is still not flawless. So if you want a flawless system, make sure to use base components as I showed before, where you create variants and then you put that over here or else you can use instant swap, right? So those are two options, but make sure when you're using instant swap, you add this so that you end up creating folders. Okay. Now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and stick with base components because I think base components are much easier to document and base components just make it very easy for anybody to understand. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that we have base components and I'm going to press enter, select this component, and then we can choose progress circle if you want. Perfect. Now talking about the feature that Figma should introduce is that without using instant swap, when I click on this element, I should have an option here to pick between the variants itself, right? Now that would be called as variant swap properties. Now I would love for Figma to go ahead and create the solution, but I'm sure they've gotten feedback on it. Okay, now moving forward. Now let's say we have this element, obviously we have the uh, icon container and we also have the icon that also we should be able to switch, right? Now for icons, very specifically, you want to use instant swap. So now the thing is we have two places where you can add the instant swap property. We can either add the instant swap property over here or we can add it over here in the base component. Now let's see what happens in both cases. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this element and this is a comp this is a instance of a component. We have, I'm, I've called it diamond and I'm gonna come over here. And the thing is I can't really add the instant swap on this. So what that means is this is only one place to add it and that is in the base component. So I'm gonna select the base component, click on this, okay? And then over here, I can come over here and add it over here. So I'm just gonna say um, icon swap and I'm gonna click on enter and that's gonna create a property. So let's see how this works again. So I'm gonna click on this, everything is normal. I'm going to go one level deeper and then I'm gonna choose the icon indicator. Now, the moment I choose the icon indicator, we get the instant swap as well. So now I can change it from the diamond to any other icon that I want, okay? So let's say I choose a bag, it changes to a bag. Let's say I change it to a chevron right, it changes to a chevron right. And let's say I want to change it to uh, the diamond again. Uh, I think the diamond, I pulled that from a different file, but, uh, but anyway, it still works. So I'm just gonna control Z that so we get back to the diamond component over here, right? So there you go. As you see, we're going deeper and deeper while making these components. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. Um, cool, so now we let's look at the right side. Uh, we, we handle the left, we have the right. Now in the right, we have a couple of things. We have this one, which uh, is a CTA with a chevron. We just have just a tag. We have a text element. Now I'm not going to look at this for now because this has an overline. I'm going to talk about this a little later because it's a little complicated. Um, we have just an icon that I can swap. We can look at this one, 
Okay, so maybe I'm going to get rid of the overline over here and we can look at this one as well. Um, we have one with a single text um, and then we have a tag and this and then both of these are just icons. So we have five, six versions of the right accessory or the end or the trailing element. So let's go ahead and create this. So first one, I'm going to pull out uh, this one over here and I'm going to bring that over here. And obviously we want this to be a component. Now we're going to use the same base component properties and principles. So I'm going to come down over here and um, I'm going to go ahead and create an instance of this. There we go. Obviously you can press shift A to make it into an auto layout. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and call this end element. Perfect. I'm going to add a fill over here. And I'm going to delete the second one uh, because we don't need that for now. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this property and choose type. Okay. And the first one, which is obviously this is going to be a CTA. Oops, sorry. Um, type select th the element and set that to CTA. Okay. Uh, let's select the second one, which is this tag. Okay. I'm going to copy this tag and I'm going to bring that over here and make this a component as well. I'm going to call this end component, sorry, end element. Obviously make sure that you have the same layers. And once you have the same layers, the same names, you can drop them inside. Okay. And I'm going to call this tag. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is select these two. Uh, this is the master, obviously. And I'm going to take this element, just make a copy of this and put it on the right side. Um, and also what we can do is we can set it to fill container so that it takes up the entire space, just very neatly sitting in the center. And obviously I can change this up or down and that adds this over here as well. Now, the first thing here is we want to select this and obviously not all elements for, for example, um, we can have a situation where we can have a situation like this, where we don't even have the right accessory. And we can also have a situation where we don't have the left, left accessory, right? So these are possibilities. So what that means is I'm going to select this and obviously start off by choosing the Boolean. So make sure you come to the layer, you um, click here, add the property and you can create a new property. Okay. And I'm going to call this end and then I'm going to say create property. And so now what I can do, I have the subtext, I have the start and I also have the end. Perfect. Now coming to the same situation over here for the start where we had two variations for the end, we have more than one variation. So what I can then do is I can click on this element as you see over here, and then I can change the end element, you know, to be a tag as well. Now we have this little issue. So what we can do is we can just select the right uh, element and then just set that to hug contents for now. Um, we can change it later if we come across any issue. So for now we just leave it, leave that as it is. Okay, great. Now the other thing here is that this tag can have multiple options. Let me explain what that means. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this and I'm going to right click and choose. I'm going to detach instance. I can have three versions of this. Okay. So this, um, let's say we make this red color and then we select this and then we make this red. Now the other one is we could, um, make it a neutral color, select the tag, and then we can apply the same color that we have over here. Okay. So now this tag can have three options. Now there are two ways to solve this. Obviously you go ahead and create multiple of these. So this is going to be the red tag. This is going to be the neutral tag, right? But again, is that the right solution? What if you have to have 10 more tags in the future? What if you have an orange color tag, a purple color tag for whatever purpose it is? This is going to be so crazy because what's going to happen here is in this drop down that you select, you're going to have so many different options to choose from and that makes no sense, right? So instead, we're now going to use a sub base component of the main base component. So what that means is I'm going to go ahead and call this tag and then I'm going to call this also tag and then I'm going to go call this also tag. I'm going to select all of this and then I'm going to go ahead and you can, what you can do is you can make this whole thing into one component or you can come here and say, create multiple components and that's just going to make each of them an individual component. And then you can say combine as variants. Okay. And then I'm going to add some color and then press shift a to auto layout. Okay. And now all we have to do is I can set the property to be type and then I can call this um, success. I can call this failed and I can call this neutral. Okay. So now I'm going to delete this one because this is a separate thing and this is a separate thing. So I'm going to select this one 
and I'm gonna make a duplicate of this and then bring that over here. Okay, now the thing here is that we have a problem and I'm gonna tell you what the problem is. Now this ended up creating this random property number two. And if I go ahead and let's say I delete that, okay, and I come over here and let's say I select the end element, let's actually restore everything to default. So this is the default and I come here and select the tag. Now the thing here is that I'm not able to select these items, right? It's just allowing you to switch between tag CTA and tag, but I'm not able to select this. So that's because what's happening here is that this is the master component as you see over here. But this also is the master component because it has this fill diamond, which doesn't make sense. So the right way to do this, you want to make a duplicate of this. As you can see now, this is the instance. And then you create this again into another component. Okay. So now, as you can see, we have three levels. This is the instance. Okay. And then I'm going to select this and I'm going to call this end element. And then I'm going to put this inside. So now in this end element, we have one option, which is the CTA with the Chevron. And the other one is this, and I'm going to obviously call this tag. Okay. And, and maybe I'm going to call this tag element. Okay. So now, now we can click on this. Okay. And let me just actually go ahead and say, um, reset all changes. And then I'm going to click on the end one. I'm going to change this from CTA to tag. And after I do that, I can go one level deeper by pressing enter. And then I have success, neutral and failed. So now let me do the naming convention and then see if this is an approach that we should go with. So obviously here in the end, I'm going to add that icon uh, to show that you can go one level deeper. Okay. So obviously over here, and then I'm going to click on this and here again in the type, Okay, I'm going to select this. And then for tag, I'm going to add that other icon here again. Okay, so let's just check again. So we have end, we have the icon that's suggesting that there are more components. So click on that. And then before it was a CTA, and then now there's a tag and the tag has this. So I'm going to press one level down again. And then we can see that we have three different options to pick from. So I can choose failed or I can choose neutral. Okay, perfect. Now, so that means that there are multiple levels and it can be a little tricky. So in this case, what we can do is let's say we remove all of this. Okay. And here we just have tag element, neutral tag element, fail and tag element success. Okay. And this is tag element success over here. So now what that means, let's go ahead and reset all this. So we can do this one by one again. So for end, let's select this and choose tag. Okay. Now here we want to have an instance swap. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one and come here to the tag element success. And here I'm going to choose an instance swap. I'm going to call this tag swap. Okay. And I can now remove that icon, right? I can remove this icon that you see over here because we're not going one level deeper. Okay. And let's see what that did, right? So let's go ahead and reset all of this again. So we have this, and then I'm going to select the second one, and then I'm going to change the type from CTA to tag. And now I can quickly change that over here to neutral or failed. So I'm not going one level deeper. I'm just saving that extra level and enabling the tag swap instance right here, right? Now, what that means is can we save another level? So let's see what happens. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to bring this outside. Okay. So we have end element CTA. Okay. And I'm going to call this end element tag success. Okay. I'm going to paste that over here End element tag failure come over here End element tag neutral. Okay. And pull this all over here to the side. And now let's see what we can do here. So I'm obviously going to go ahead and reset all changes and select this one. And oh, of course, we want to make sure that we select this. And now we want to add the instance swap property to this because we can't add it anywhere over here. Each of these are individual ones. These are not variants now. Okay. I'm going to add this. I'm going to say 
end swap okay so now as you can see over here if i hide this i don't see it but the moment i turn this on we can see that the reason is because to this we add two properties one is the visibility and the other is the instance swap so i'm going to select this all right or or actually i'm going to come over here and then from here i can choose do i want a cta do i want a tag failure do i want a tag neutral or do i want a tag success like i said this works this is perfect but the problem here is that if i go back i can change that to anything else that i want which should not be the case so it's not a flawless problem but it still works as long as the designers know how to work okay so i'm just going to control z that and i'm come over here and then we have the end element and then we have all of these options to pick from okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep two different approaches right now the first approach is where we are using base components the second one is where we are not using base components but we are using a good naming convention that makes the instance swap work so i'm giving you two different examples so one is for the start we go in and then you change the settings and for the other one the right you can change that right over here to whatever you want and that makes it super fast and super simple and as you can see this is still just one component everything is being controlled by this one component and we can create a million options so right so i can come over here remove the start i can come over here i can remove the start add the subtitle I can remove the subtext i can come over here i can just have just the title and as you can see i can go ahead and create millions and millions of options now we have a couple more things um so obviously we have this which is a chevron that is there to a title so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this chevron okay and i'm going to come over here and i'm going to paste it in the main title okay and now we're just going to have to refactor a little bit of the um auto layout over here so i'm going to set this to huck i'm going to create a new auto layout for this and obviously make sure to check out my auto layout tutorial if you want to learn exactly what i'm doing so this to four okay there we go and now as you can see it gets added to all of these components over here okay um now obviously not all list items will be expandable so what we can do is we can click on this element and this is as you can see it's a chevron it's an instance and i can go ahead to the layer property okay and i'm going to say create property and i'm going to call this accordion okay and i'm going to say true so what that means is if i select this element and this as you can see it says here it's an accordion and let's actually go ahead and move these around so i'm going to move this all the way to the uh uh to the top okay um so accordion is on the top and we can disable it and you know the uh element goes away now the thing is what is the default state now the default state is that i don't want this icon to be there so we can select this element um and i can double click over here or actually let's go to the select the main one and here in the accordion click on the properties and the default one i want that to be false right i don't want to be visible by default i'm going to select this and obviously then the default one is going to be without it visible and then i can click on that to bring it out if i want okay so now that is about adding this now the next is this icon here again so i should be able to swap this icon to a switch or a checkbox or a radio button i should be able to do it change it to anything okay so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to uh, bring that over here okay and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make this another component and we're going to give it the same naming convention i'm going to copy this and paste it and then i'm going to go ahead and call this to be icon okay so now let's for example let's select uh, i'm going to delete all of this we don't need this i'm going to turn off this accordion um and in the right accessory we have an option that says icon Okay, when I click on that, we see that there's some issue over here. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly fix that um, with some auto layout stuff. So I'm going to come over here, and then this is going to be uh, right, and then this is going to be uh, center. Okay. So now, as you can see, now it's perfectly sitting. It's perfect. Now the other thing here is that when I click on this icon, I should be able to swap this to a different icon. Um, now I can't go ahead and add every single icon that we have over here because maybe we have five or 10 different icons that we have so what that means is now i have to select this i have to come here to the checkbox and here i have to have add an instance swap okay so i'm going to say icon swap okay so now what that is going to do is as you can see i've created the icon over here obviously it it was cta before 
I change that to icon and now I have to press enter here and then I can change this from checkbox to a bag for example or uh, another item or let's say we want to change it to a filled icon over here. So what I can do is I can click over here. Um, so let's go one by one, right? So we have the first one. Uh, I've ch So let's go ahead and set everything to default. So let's say reset all changes. I'm gonna select the um, element. I have the end swap. I can change that to be the icon. And now once I've changed that to icon, I need to go one level deeper. So I need to select this. And then here I have the instant swap and I can, let's say I can set that to uh, checkbox filled. Okay, so there is a little bit of extra effort that you see we need over here, but that is totally okay. So what I can do is I can duplicate this. Let's say I don't want uh, the subtext. I don't want, I want the accordion. And let's say I want this element to be the progress circle. And over here, I'm gonna click on this, uh, which is the element. And then I can quickly change this to, um, just, just set it to checkbox. Um, and then we have this, right? So. It does take a little bit of extra effort, but again, it's all about how you document it and how your designers understand the documentation that you have created. Now, moving forward again, we have multiple options where we have this double tag and subtext, single tag and subtext, and just a subtext, right? So now, how do you do this? Again, you have two options. You either create a base component, so you make three variants, one with subtext, one with tag and subtext, and one with tag, tag, and subtext, or you can go ahead and create, just separate ones outside. So let's go ahead and quickly do that to understand. So I'm going to um, copy this. Uh, I'm going to bring ahead and paste that over here, right? Uh, or maybe we're gonna move it, let's move all of this a little bit to the left, okay? So obviously we're gonna make this a component and I'm gonna call this subtitle, okay? Slash two tags. I'm gonna make a duplicate or uh, I'm gonna make um, a variant of this and I'm create another variant of this, okay? And I'm gonna release one tag and then I'm going to delete both the tags over here. And I'm just gonna take all of these th things outside, okay? And as you can see, we have subtitle two tags. We have, this is going to be subtitle one tag and this is going to be subtitle um, zero tags. Okay, so now obviously what we want to do is we want to take a duplicate of this and then we're gonna put that inside of this. Okay, we're gonna delete the original one that we had. Okay, um, and now here again, we need to apply those properties because as you see over here, now we lost that sub subtitle text Boolean property. We can just have start and end. So I'm gonna click on uh, this, which is the subtitle one. And then I'm going to add the layer visibility. We already have that property created. So I'm just going to apply that. As you can see, it is applied. And I'm also going to add the instance swap, right? Over here. So I'm going to say, create a new property and we'll call this subtitle swap. So let's go ahead and reset this. I'm gonna say, um, reset all changes. Okay, I'm gonna delete this one. So let's come over here. Now we have the subtext subtext or, you know, let, let me actually change the naming convention. I'm gonna come here and call this subtext swap. I'm gonna move this up to the subtext. Okay, and then we're gonna add now the icon because now we can go one level deeper. Okay, so now let's click on this. Now I'm gonna hide this. I'm gonna hide the end as well. So now we have the subtext. We turn that on, we get a subtext swap, and then we have zero tags, and then we have one tag, and then we have two tags. So I can add two tags and then I can add one tag and it works. Now, the other interesting thing here is that I'm gonna select this instance. Now, obviously this is not a component as you see over here. This tag is not a component, okay? And let's say in this case, I wanted to change this tag to be a neutral tag, right? How do I do it? The only way you would do it is you would come over here. You would select this tag that you see over here. And obviously you can't change this because this is not an instance. So let's say, I'm going to select this one. I'm going to make a copy of this and I'm going to put that inside over here. And I'm going just going to make sure that as you can see over here, we have the tag success, tag success. And then I'm going to paste that over here as well. Um, oops, whoa, okay. Just making sure that everything's perfect. Uh, this is going to be one tag, oops. One tag, there we go. So now we come back over here. Um, I can now select this tag that you see over here. Or let's go ahead and reset everything and try it again from first. So I'm going to say reset all changes. Uh, I'm going to set this to be, let's say one tag. 
Okay, now the thing here is again, now if I have to change this tag, I have to go one level deeper and actually go down and change it here from tag success to something else. Now I can do that, but the thing here is that I'm selecting it from end element, which is a different folder and a group altogether. And that's the reason this system also may not work. Now, if your design system or your, now if your components are really complicated, this system may not really work. It can be very confusing because here again, right? And I come over here, when I click on this, you're allowing me to add a CT over here, which absolutely makes no sense, right? So that means that I should be limited to picking only from these three things. So if you go with the base components route, then this will work. So make sure to follow base components rather than using this system. So let's go ahead and reset this. And let's test this once again. Um, we turn on the subtitle and then we have one tag and then we have, we have two tags, okay? And in order to change this, we want to have base components. So let's go ahead and quickly fix all that. So the easiest way is first of all, I'm going to combine these as variants and then I'm going to add a fill, okay? So I'm just going to call this type. So we have this, this is two tags, this is one tag, this is zero tags. Um, move this down. I'm going to combine all of this as well. So I combine as variants. And then I'm going to add just like a, like a fill over here so we can see what's going on. Uh, and remove, actually I'm going to remove these three tags outside. Okay. I'm just going to call this tag and then tag and then tag. And then I'm going to select all of this and then combine these as variants. Press shift A and then add a color to the background. Uh, and uh, obviously we don't, we have too many options over here. So I'm just going to delete all of these that we don't want. And here I'm just going to say type. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be success. This is going to be failure. And then this is going to be neutral, right? And I'm gonna make a duplicate of this. And then this one, I'm going to create that into a component and I'm going to call this end element. So then I'm going to put that inside and here, uh, let's just go ahead. We have a lot of these unnecessary ones. I'm going to delete this property, delete this property. We just need to have one simple one, which says type. This is going to be CTA. This is going to be tag. And then this is going to be icon. Okay. So now, what we should have here is if I go ahead and reset all changes. Okay. And if I come over here or let's select this one, you see that things are not right. So for example, if I turn this on, you can see that it allows me to choose pretty much anything that I want, which makes no sense. So we're going to come over here and refactor all of this. The first thing is I'm going to remove the swaps over here because we just want the visibilities, right? So accordion, yes or no, subtext, yes or no, start element, yes or no end element, yes or no. And as you can see, the subtext goes one level deeper. So then I can come down here. And if you want, I can choose the subtext element over here. And in the subtext, I can change it to, let's say one tag. And then now here, even for tags, I can go deeper. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select two tags and add the drop down over here and then uh, not the drop down, the icon that I mean um, over here. So when I select this, I have one tag, which means I can go one level deeper. So I'm going to go one level deeper. And here I can choose it from success, neutral, or failure, right? So I can go ahead and make a duplicate of this. So let's come over here and select the, sub, the subtext. And let's say we choose two tags. Okay, now it shows me that I can go multiple, another level down. And I'm going to select this one. And then here I'm going to set this to be, let's say, neutral. Right. And if I want, I can delete, remove the subtext and then that goes away. So in essence, using base components is actually the right way, because even though it might take a little bit more longer to create the component you want, it is so restrictive that you cannot make mistakes in it. Now let's look at one final option where we have this Chevron over here. Now, how are you going to integrate that? It's this one is actually really simple. So what I'm going to do is this was actually an auto layout as you see over here. So I'm going to uh, actually I'm going to call this tag element. Okay. 
I'm going to click on this Chevron. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and do some auto layout stuff. Okay. And here we can go ahead and then add a Boolean property to this. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say, uh, I'm just going to say Chevron and then I'm going to say true. Okay. Um, or maybe let's not make uh, true the default. Let's make false as the default. So uh, let me come over here and then say Chevron and then the value is false. Let's set that to false. Okay. So now what I can do over here is I can, let's say I come over here and on the right hand side, I'm going to select this, change that to be a tag. Okay. And I can then also toggle on the Chevron if I want or not. And even after I do that, I'd say I select, um, select this tag. I can come here and change that to a neutral one or a failure one. Okay. And then I don't want the subtext. Let maybe we get rid of the subtext. Right. So as you can see, by using base components, you're able to create incredibly amount of iterations. And guess what? All this is from one single component, right? With this component, you can create multiple variants of it with just one component. Now, once you have all of this ready, what are the other things that we can do? So I'm going to move this over here to the side. Okay. And now we might have multiple states. Let's say we need a hover state. So I'm going to go ahead and create a duplicate of this and then do create a duplicate of this. So maybe we add some extra color over here um, to show that this it's being hovered on. Okay. And then maybe let's say we reduce the opacity of this. So maybe first of all, I'm going to add some color over here. So we're going to add a fill. Uh, yeah. And then Let's maybe we make this a little bit darker so we can see what is going on. Um, yeah, fill. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and let's say we want this to be disabled. So I'm just going to drop the opacity to like 40%. All right. And I can come over here and set the property. The first one, I'm going to set that to state. And then this is going to be active. This is going to be hover. This is going to be, let's say, disabled. You can have multiple states if you want. And even if I select this one, you can then see that I can set this to be a hover state or I can set this to be a disabled state, all right? Whatever it is, and it works perfectly, right? So with this one component, I have three variants of this actually, but still we're able to create so many options. So this is pretty much all there is to know about component properties, variants, and base components. I hope you guys found this video really, really helpful. If you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.